Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are watching the live, you can just simply fast forward a little bit while I wait for some people to get on. I'm really excited about today's topic. <clears throat> and let me make sure I'm live and we are going to get started. All right. Okay, it says that I'm live here. Give me one second, ladies. Mm. We Gucci. Okay. All right, ladies. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley Empowers. I am a high earning housewife and I help women steward their homes and their businesses with excellence. And today we are going to be talking about how to know when your body is giving you a no. So I mentioned this on one of my previous lives when I was talking about um, my soft woman chapter and my decision to go on what I'm calling a mini retirement and how I came about that decision was being able to really be in tune with my body when opportunities would come up and I had decisions to make and my body was telling me no. So this live is all about decision making and how to know when your body is giving you a no. So I have a dream, right? I have a dream that women will be so in tune with their inner guidance i.e. the Holy Spirit, that they stop looking outside of themselves and they stop looking at social media for the answers that are already within them. So as someone who loves to teach on femininity and how to have feminine rest, especially in motherhood and as a entrepreneur, this is so important. And when you listen to your body and when you're listening to your inner guidance, it is also the key to you embracing your feminine nature. So if you are a woman who wants to actually experience soft living, experience what it's like to really truly be in your feminine nature, you are in the right place. So the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our comforter, is our guide, depending on what translation you're reading. It's teaching you that your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is your companion, right? Which is incredible. And that I refer to inner guidance, like that inner knowing, that feeling of being led to the Holy Spirit. So depending on the Holy Spirit in your inner guidance, it allows you to stop trying to force everything and to surrender to being led. And so as a woman, it is so important that you understand and you know what a no feels like in your body and what a yes feels like in your body. And it's a skill that you are going to be able to develop over time. And the whole purpose of me doing this live is to teach you how to do that. So when you walk away from watching this video, you have a greater understanding of who you are as a woman and how to use your inner guidance for the best. So if you are a woman who has been living in a constant state of chronic stress, or you have been living in survival mode, no's and yeses they can become very blurry, right? And the Bible tells us that God is not a God of confusion. When you feel something in your spirit, when you sense something within your body, you should be able to trust that. But because people are so stressed out, because they are so, their comfort zone and their norm 
is survival mode, it has become increasingly difficult for women to understand when something is an automatic no, okay? And so when you start honoring your needs, when you start honoring your boundaries and you are true to your deepest desires, you are able to really tap into the Holy Spirit to surrender to the Holy Spirit guiding you. And it's a beautiful thing. It is literally such, it's like next level feminine living when you are able to understand what a no feels like in your body. And so sometimes when your body is telling you no to something, sometimes it can feel like a physical sensation, like you can feel your body tense up, like you feel discomfort physically. And sometimes it's a feeling of uneasiness in your spirit or lack of peace. And I can't tell you how many women that I've coached, that I've spoken to over the years, that they literally bypass those feelings when it's so clear to them that their body is trying to tell them, no, make another decision, Re uh, reconsider, read some litter. You know, if y'all know Andre 3000. Anyway, so <clears throat> being able to honor your no, being able to discern a no, that's what's going to keep you in alignment with what you're meant to be doing now and who you're meant to become. That's what's going to keep you in alignment. So let's get into how you know when your body is giving you a no. And I'm going to go through some very practical things. So if you want to take some notes, grab you a notebook because this is about to be good and juicy. And I see you guys in the comments. Hey, Kina. Hey, Cozy. Hey, Tahisha. Chikonde. Chikondai. From Zambia, Africa. I love it. I'm so happy that you're here. And I'll take some questions at the end. Okay. So how to know when your body is telling you no, when it's giving you a no. Number one, you feel overwhelmed. If you feel over, and this is again, in terms of decision making, we have decisions that we make every single day as women, as wives, as mothers, as human beings, right? So if you feel overwhelmed in your body, most likely that it, it, that is your body telling you no. So if you feel overwhelmed, um, also, you know, your body is giving you a no. If this is a decision, you keep questioning. You keep questioning it. Maybe you've made the decision, but you're constantly reconsidering. You're constantly questioning it, right? That's an indicator your body is giving you a no. Um, also, if you try to delay the decision as long as possible, right? You want to be an assertive woman who is confident in her decisions and who is decisive, right? So if you make the decision and then you go back or you're trying to delay it, that's an internal red flag of your body trying to tell you something. Um, also, <clears throat> if you are terrified to trust yourself. This is huge. And we're going to park here for just a second. So you know that you're a woman who struggles with being able to discern if your body is giving you a no. If you are someone who looks for validation and confirmation from everywhere. And there is nothing wrong with leaning in to wise counsel. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's a good thing. But if you're someone who, when you have a decision to make 
or you're trying to figure out the next step in your journey or the trajectory of your profession, and all you do is search YouTube, so, search social media, you're calling your mom for her perspective, you're calling every friend for their perspective, you are looking for other people who may be making the same decision to see what they're doing, that is an indicator that you are not a woman who trusts her own decisions, right? So it's one thing to seek wise counsel, but there's another thing for you to be asking every single person for their perspective, watching and listening to every podcast to get answers that are already within you, okay? So another way that you know that your body is giving you no, a, a no is if you don't feel safe, right? And this can be even in terms of dating. And it makes me think of when I was single back in the day. It's funny, my husband and I were talking this morning about, I'm just like, can you believe we've been together for 11, almost 11 years? Like, this is nuts. But anyway, <laughs> when I was dating, I remember um, meeting this guy who was very attractive, right? Side note, God gives, okay, see, this is the type of stuff that I'd be sharing on live that I should probably like not share. But anyway, let me, okay, let me just go ahead and share. So anyway, oops, I kicked the camera. Um, when I was dating, I remember being in my early 20s and I was really attracted to a certain type of physique, right? I'm tall. So, you know, I like a guy that's tall, you know, six, five and above. So I met this guy and he was very attractive, very nice. Wasn't he wasn't anything negative towards me, but I just felt like he was a no, okay? And I did not feel safe around him. And then I remember one time we were having a conversation and he was telling me some like weird stuff in his past. And so I was like, hold on. Like, <clears throat> it was very odd. And so, um, because from a young age, I've known to listen to my inner guidance and to trust my inner guidance, I didn't entertain this individual. Although he was very attractive on the outside, something within me didn't feel safe. Like something didn't feel safe. And then I remember a few years later, my husband and I were at church and I look down the row and I see him with another woman and literally my mind thought demon. Like my mind, and I know that sounds crazy, but literally I was like, it felt like I just saw a demon. Like it was crazy. But anyway, when you don't feel safe in your body, even when something looks good on the outside, you know that it's a no. Um, if you keep exploring other options, you know that it's a no, right? So if in, let's, let's talk about dating. And let me know in the comments, are you single? Are you dating? Are you married? Let me know. Um, and I'll use some examples for married women as well. But if you keep exploring other options, I, we can talk about this in terms of dating. We can talk about this in terms of um, doing work that's purposeful to you. But I remember, even if you're single and you desire to get married, but you find yourself talking to this guy, but still being open to all these other options, that shows me you're not locked in, right? When I met my husband, I cut off all other options because I'm like, he is something special, right? Um, also, when it comes to careers and to jobs. If you get a job, but you're still constantly looking, 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 maybe that's not where you're meant to be, right? And there might be times where seasons change and jobs change and that's fine. But if you're constantly exploring other options and even with like men, right? Men who cannot commit and lock into one female because they're exploring other options, if they had the internal wisdom that the person that they're entertaining is a no, they would stop wasting people's time, okay? Um, also, if you procrastinate thinking about the thing, it could be your body telling you no. Um, if you don't feel ready 
or you feel like you need some time, it could be your body telling you no, right? Um, let's say you're family planning and you're wanting to have more children, but you don't, you just don't feel quite ready and you feel like you need some more time. And this is, I use the word discernment because I don't think anybody is ever just all the way ready for kids, but there is a piece that comes with family planning if you're intentional about it. And so if you don't feel like you're ready for something or if you need some more time, trust that. Um, also, if things feel forced, this is a huge one. And again, if you're someone who wants to embrace her feminine nature, who wants to enjoy what it feels like to not always have to be in control, to make everything happen, understand things, no's will come to you and you have to listen to them or else you, it can feel like you're forcing things, right? So if something feels forced, if you're trying to just make stuff happen, and there's nothing wrong with having being ambitious or going after something, but there is a there is a difference between trying to make something happen by force and make something happen by being led. Okay, so you want to be led versus forced. Um, and also, um, lastly, if you're feeling tense and tight, right? And this is all about decision making. When decisions come your way, how does it feel in your body? Even something as small as being invited to a birthday party or um, a social outing. And this is one thing that I have slowed down. And I'm going to tell you in just a second how to get better at being in tune um, with honoring your no. But sometimes I used to look at my calendar and have things that I said yes to that I would be so... Uh, I would have to force myself to go because I'm like, I never wanted to do this in the first place. I never wanted to go to this birthday party or um, something recently. My kids, I found myself being like a soccer mom, which I'm not, right? Like I'm not the mom who's ripping and running across town, taking my kids here, taking my kids there. Like, that's not my personality. I believe that kids should be in extracurricular activities. I believe that they should play outside with friends. But I noticed as I have become a mother that some moms run themselves ragged trying to create successful children, whatever. And so a few months ago, I noticed that I was like just super busy with my kids and not having any time for myself. So I said, oh, no, we got to rearrange these schedules because we're not about to be at jujitsu five days a week, baseball practice, gymnastics, etiquette class. So I started chopping things off, taking things off of their plate and mine, right, which has allowed me to show up for my husband better, to show up for my kids better, and to show up for myself because I am pri I'm a priority, right? So I remember going to my son's jujitsu classes, like thinking the practice of jujitsu is awesome, but my body is telling me, no, this is not the season for this, right? This is not the season for this. And then it got to the point where I started like dreading going, like, these, like, it was just the weirdest thing. Cause I'm like, all, like, these other activities, I enjoy sitting there watching. But for some reason, my body was telling me no to that activity, like, right now in this season. And so I was like telling my husband, like, I think I'm about to cancel this. And so I hit up the people to cancel, and they're like, oh, you're gonna have to pay all these hundreds of dollars because you signed a year contract, which immediately irritated me because I didn't even sign them up. So I'm like <laughs> talking to my husband, like, you signed a year contract for this? Like, and it's crazy before he even signed them up, I was like, don't sign them up because I'm not about to be the one taking them. <laughs> but he signed them up anyway because my husband thought he was gonna have more availability, which He's very, this is a very, very busy season for my husband and he doesn't. And so I ended up canceling it and I was like, listen, charge our, charge our car for the balance because nothing 
costs more than my piece, right? So I honor that no, it came with a financial um, repercussion. But when you get to a place where your piece surpasses money, it's like charge it to the game. I'm like, I'm not even worried about that. So anyway, as we wrap up, I want to give you just a couple of things to know or to help you, let's say, rather, to help you be in tune when your body is telling you no, okay? So, and I want you to get so quick with this that it saves you so much time and so much mental energy and that you get to a, a point where you're really trusting yourself and you're trusting your inner guidance that you're no longer having to spend and exert so much mental energy trying to make decisions, all right? So number one, if you're taking notes, notes, write this down. You want to stop zooming past internal stop signs. Stop zooming past internal stop signs. So I want you to slow down when making decisions, okay? Oh, somebody's calling you to help plan this baby shower. Don't give them an answer right now. Hey, I appreciate you thinking about me. Let me check my schedule and I will get back with you. It buys you to some time. Hey, I was thinking that maybe we should... Can you, if, if request to help with stuff, request for social outings, request to do X, Y, and Z. Like you have to understand, you have to prioritize yourself, your peace, your mental health so much that you can even politely tell the ones that you love, no, right? I remember <laughs> recently my husband asked me to do something and I do a lot. And I was like, no, I can't do that. Like, I forgot what it was, but it was a total inconvenience. And sometimes as a partnership in a union, you're going to be inconvenienced. But sometimes you have to honor your peace and say no. And guess what? He figured it out. So one, don't zoom past internal um, internal stop signs. You want to slow down when making decisions. You want to um, prey on things. Um, you want, and not everything is super spiritual that you need to like seek the Lord whether or not you should go to this little kid's birthday party. Sometimes you can observe your physical state and be like, I don't feel like doing that this weekend. I don't want to go to another kid's birthday party. We're going to chill as a family. That's what we're going to do. Um, you also want to stop saying yes to things that you dread and understand you have permission to do this. So I talk to a lot of women who by choice have a ton of things on their plate because they are good things. Maybe they're volunteering at church. Maybe they're helping out with the friend's baby shower. Maybe they are um, helping out with the kid's school. Good things, right? But you don't have to say yes to everything. And you definitely don't want to be in a position where you look at your calendar and there's things on there that you dread. You have the permission as the decision maker in your life to say no to things that do not light you up. Like stop saying yes to all these things that do not light you up. Like it, first off, I call it like clogging the pipe. So if you're saying yes to something, a volunteer position at church, whereas there might be someone who that that thing lights them up, they're so excited about it, but because you said yes at an obligation, it's clogging the pipe for them to be able to do it. You get what I'm saying? I remember when I first had my son, we went, we were going to a new location of the church that we go to. And um, I guess somebody found out that I was like, you know, that I do some social media stuff. And so they were constantly asking me, they were, they were constant. There's like a bird building this nest right in front of me in my window. Um, they, they were constantly asking me if I would serve with the social media team. My answer was no. You know, I'm, 
at the time, I think my son was like three months old. So I'm like nursing him. I'm, it's hard for me to get to church because I'm stepping outside of church to the mother's room to nurse him. And it's like, you want, this is not the time to be at, no, you see what I'm saying? And so I'm very polite with my no, but you want to not say no to things that you may dread, even if it's good things. So people are like, oh my gosh, I can't say no to something at church. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So, um, and then I already mentioned observing your physical state when a decision is coming your way. Um, you want to be in a place where you can quiet outside voices so you can finally hear your own. Okay? Quiet the external chatter so you can finally hear your own. And taking a social media break will truly help you with this. Having strict boundaries about what you're inputting into your mind, into your ear gates will very much help you with this. And so I, having conversations with people, <clears throat> I can see, this is so interesting. When I'm having conversations with people, social media has gotten to such an overwhelming place for people that I can even pinpoint the type of content their algorithm is feeding them based off of what their decor looks like in their home, based off of the clothes that they're wearing, based off of their, like, it's like I can see what they're being influenced by simply by having conversations with people, right? You know, the, there's a certain aesthetic, there, it's a difference between people who are staying true to their desires or what type of decor they want in their house, what type of clothing they want to wear, how they want to wear their hair versus what they're seeing on social media. So sometimes taking a step back from social media will help you to be able to quiet those voices so you can finally hear your own. And so I really hope that this video encourages you to take some time to slow down in your decision making, be in tune with not only your physical state of your body, but how things make you feel emotionally and understand that the more that you listen to your inner guidance, the Holy Spirit, the more you honor what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you, the stronger that voice is going to be for you, right? So you might just want to start trusting on, if depending on where you are, it might just be little things like, what, am I, what should I wear today? And your body is telling you to wear a flowy dress, right? But you're like, no... Maybe I'll just put on yoga pants and save my cute dress for this weekend. No, like honor what your body is telling you, okay? And so one thing that I want to say, and go ahead, if you have any questions, you can, those of you who are live, drop any questions that you have. But even when you say yes to something that should have been a no, I want to encourage you with the scripture, Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good of them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So I'm not sitting here as if I am just the most decisive person in every decision that I make is correct or right or fruitful. That's not true. I make bad decisions. But one thing that I'm committed to doing is honoring when my body is telling me no, even when it's good things, even when it's financially lucrative things, right? Like that's something I had to really grow past. I remember this past year, I had to say no to something that was just like transparently speaking in affiliate money, which is passive income, earning over $50,000 a year 
me not doing anything. It was just showing up in my account, but I had to say no to it. I had to say no to continuing because my body was telling me, no, you're done with that. You're moving on to something else, right? So sometimes it can be very hard because it's like, ooh, <clears throat> why am I dreading this thing? Or why would I say no to this financially lucrative thing, right? But you have to be able to trust yourself and understand you don't know, you don't have all the answers, Sway. You just got to listen. You just have to listen. So it's like, and it makes me think of like the parent-child relationship, how when I'm parenting my children, when I tell them no to something, they don't always know the why. They might ask me why. And sometimes as a black mom, I'm like, don't ask, don't, ask, don't ask me why. Just know that it's a no. But sometimes I have the patience to explain the no. But I just feel like you aren't always going to know the why behind the reason why your body is telling you no. You just want to get good at honoring it. Okay? So know that the presence of God is within you. His power, the power of God is for you. And the better you get at listening to your body, listening to your inner guidance, honoring those no's, the more likely you are going to be to truly be in your feminine nature. And so for those of you I had asked earlier, are any of you guys single? And I see that there are quite a few single women listening. I think this is so important when it comes to dating and relationships because my whole purpose on being on social media is to help women build strong marriages so in turn they will have strong families. So that might be through the High Earning Housewife program. That might be through Worthy of the Weight program. But the Worthy of the Weight program is a program that helps single women be in their feminine nature so they have the confidence to say no to the wrong guy so they can say yes to the right guy, that they can go build a marriage that's a sign and wonder in this world. So if this is a season of and you're single and you're like, yes, I want to really work on my feminine nature. I really want to work on attracting the right person who I can build a legacy with. The Worthy of the Weight program would be amazing for you. It's currently 50% off, okay? It was in my spirit to do that. And you can go to worthyoftheweight.org to check that out. Um, I cannot guarantee how long it's gonna be 50% off. Literally, we have, we've had people enroll at full price, but today I was like, I'm gonna make it 50% off. And for those of you who are in the season of um, preparing for marriage, embracing your femininity, and just attracting an amazing husband, <coughs> it's for you. All right. So let me see if there's any questions here. And again, be expecting more. Someone said, came with financial ramifications. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes your peace comes with financial ramifications. Y'all. I can, and I can give so many examples, right? I remember my husband and I went to, no, yeah, my husband and I went to Jamaica and I booked this hotel and I'm a hotel snob. Like I like to stay in nice places and we walk in and it was straight giving Fashion Nova girlies. It was loud it was drinking. It was turn up. That wasn't the type of vacation I was on. That was, I mean, that's cool for like a bachelorette type thing. But I was with my husband. We wanted to relax. A peaceful trip. So I walk in the lobby. We didn't even make it to the room, okay? And I was like, my body said no. My body said no. I had already paid for this, okay? And so I went to the front desk and I said, I walk in here and... I tell them, this is like, this is not it for us. This is not work. Like, I just tell them, this is a no. We need a refund. We're going to go up the street. And I call my sister in the US and I was like, hey, we've been here before. Usually when my husband go to, my husband and I go to Jamaica, 
we stay at this resort in Montego Bay called Half Moon. And I was like, hey, <coughs> call them up, see if they can get us in right now. Cause we like, we're in the lobby and we're about to come. And so thankfully they had, um, they were taking more reservations. So we got to stay and it was beautiful and it was amazing. And it came with financial ramifications. Not a lot though, cause they did reimburse us the other hotel. But anyway, yes. Um, okay, let's see. Someone said, I'm in a place where I have built a platform off my current profession, but I feel a shift. How do you know when it's time to shift or pivot in business? I've been feeling burned out. That's exactly how you know, that burnout feeling. And if you're feeling burnt out, my recommendation is to take a break. My recommendation is to take a break, allow your nervous system to heal, allow yourself to just explore curiosities, do things that you enjoy so it can spark new inspiration. That is my recommendation. So if you're feeling burnt out, the number one thing that you can do is take a break. And when you're on that break, you just never know the divine inspiration that you can get for your next thing. Trey said, manifest your godly man boot camp here. Your boot camps are always great and filled with great information. Love your growth. Thank you so much. Yes. The worthy of the weight program is literally manifest your godly man on steroids. It's all that and more. Okay, ladies. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, more lives to come. If you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you are subscribed, just leave a comment on maybe your biggest takeaway or maybe an area that you are getting ready to make a decision in that's in favor of where your inner guidance is leading you or maybe something you've been contemplating um, because it also helps out my channel when you guys leave com comments. Yes, Jess, I will be saving this. Someone said, would love to see you at a homeschool conference in the future. That's if I still homeschool. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, let's see. She said, uh, Janet said, saw an interview with a lady who felt uneasy on a date. She didn't know why but called her brother to come get her, turned out to be Ted Bundy. Ooh, yeah, I saw that. I saw something similar to that. And I'll, this is the last thing that I'll say this. Um, oh, happy birthday. Um, Mahidai, I think that's how you say it. Um, anyway, yeah, I saw, I've seen stories like that before, which is crazy. Okay. Thank you, Jess, for tuning in. Thank you, Tahisha. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you, all of you guys, for tuning in. Um, and again, if you're in a season of saying, you know, I really want to feel confident in dating and I want to feel confident with my yeses in dating and I want to be in a place where I'm exuding my feminine nature when it comes to meeting people to have that legacy changing relationships, worthyoftheweight.org. You can absolutely sign up. We get started immediately and it's an incredible program, literally incredible. So thank you all so much for, oh, thank you so much for subscribing, Janice. I really appreciate it. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will be back very, very soon. Um, some video, some other videos that I have on my heart are um, regarding like femininity and motherhood. I see a lot of women who um, are promoting like soft living online who are single and don't have a lot of responsibilities. And I feel like soft living and embracing your femininity are very different when you're a wife, a mother, a business owner, um, a leader, you have responsibilities. And so um, it's been on my heart to share how to really be able to be feminine when you have a lot going on. So um, if that is something that you are interested in, let me know in the comments below and I'll be doing a video on that soon. Bye for now.